a scorching hot planet exposed to powerful rays of the close sun. A forbidding world packed with lethal contrasts. A lifeless sphere bearing marks of destructive explosions. A mysterious celestial body still harboring a great many secrets. This is Mercury, the planet lying closest to the Sun in our system. Let's find out more about it. The first outer space. Mercury lies relatively close to the Earth, but its exploration has always been associated with a lot of difficulties. On account of its close proximity to the Sun, it can be observed in the sky only at the very horizon, and this either shortly before sunrise or immediately after sunset. This is actually why ancient astronomers took Mercury for two different celestial bodies, which were given different names. Only the advancement of observation equipment enabled scientists to gradually reveal some of this unusual world's mysteries. The accumulated data shows Mercury to be the smallest planet in the solar system. Incidentally, it is even beaten by some satellites. Its radius measures 2,440 kilometers, which is roughly 38% that of the Earth. The celestial object is remarkable for its almost ideally round shape, as the difference between its equatorial and polar diameters is not over one kilometer. At the same time, given its modest size, Mercury has a surprisingly big mass. It equals 3.33 times 10 to the power of 23 kilograms, which is approximately 5.5% that of the Earth. Comparing Mercury's parameters with those of celestial objects close to it in terms of their size, Mercury is heavier than Ganymede and Titan put together. And that in spite of the fact that both of those objects' diameters are bigger. It is probably due to the fact that there is a massive metallic core with a radius reaching as much as 2,000 kilometers, accounting for about 57% of the planet's volume. The core is enveloped in a 400-kilometer layer of mantle made up of molten silicate rocks. The mantle, in its turn, is covered with a hard crust as thick as 15 to 37 kilometers. As for the planet's surface, it is vastly pockmarked with craters. Their analysis shows the celestial body not to have been noticeably geologically active for the past 3.8 billion years. Bright sunlight presents difficulties in observing Mercury through a telescope. However, this had been the only way of studying the planet until as recently as the second half of the 20th century. Everything changed in 1974, when the space probe Mariner 10 reached the planet's environs. It took pictures of 45% of the celestial body's surface and also gauged its temperature and magnetic field. In addition to that, the probe's sensors registered the exceptionally rarefied atmosphere made up of helium and other gases. 30 years later, on the 3rd of August 2004, another spacecraft took off the face of the Earth. Messenger. It took a long 11 years to reach its target, but the little probe did tackle all obstacles and eventually accomplished its mission. In the period from 2011 to 2015, Messenger beamed back hundreds of thousands of images for scientists to study, including pictures of Mercury's almost entire surface. Thanks to these pictures, important data was obtained on the celestial body's inner makeup and various features of the planet's relief were detected, including unique ones in the solar system. Also, Messenger's sensors helped supply us with some knowledge about solar wind and its unusual interaction with the planet's magnetosphere. Mercury follows an elongated elliptical orbit around the Sun, which takes 88 days to complete. In its perihelium, the planet approaches the Sun as close as 0.31 astronomical units, with a distance in the aphelium one and a half times as big, at 0.47 astronomical units. Mercury's orbital resonance, unique in the solar system, is of special interest. Its stellar day equals 58.65 Earth days, which is two-thirds of the Mercurian year. 
This makes the planet to face the Sun alternately, first with one side, then the other in the perihelion. These regions are exposed to solar radiation most, and are referred to as hot meridians. One of such regions boasts the largest geological formation on Mercury, designated on maps as Caloris Planitia. This name, which is translated as a heated plain, is fully justified, as the temperatures here reach 700 Kelvin or 427 degrees Celsius, making this area the hottest place on the planet. The plain is a gigantic impact crater, measuring 1,550 kilometers and accounting for about 2% of Mercury's total area. Estimates show the crater to have formed approximately 3.9 billion years ago, after a collision of the planet with a large asteroid, measuring as much as 100 meters in diameter. Mercury was a young and hot protoplanet at the time. The impact would have destroyed a great portion of crust that had barely solidified, and molten lava would have spilled over a vast area of the planet's surface. When it cooled and solidified, the plain was bound by a rocky crust, looking like a bright light spot easily noticeable against the dark valleys surrounding it. The surface of Caloris Planitia is pockmarked with a great number of craters measuring up to 100 kilometers in diameter. However, the most outstanding feature on this plain is Pantheon Fossae. Unique in the solar system, this structure is formed by a radial set of 230 troughs or extension faults with a width from 1 to 8 kilometers. Most of the troughs do not measure over 175 kilometers in length, with others running much further than that. There is a comparatively large crater, Apollodorus, lying not far from Pantheon Fossae's central point, but it is still not clear whether it has anything to do with the troughs. Today there are several hypotheses as to Pantheon Fossae's formation. According to one, the giant cracks appeared due to tectonic activity, while another deems the planet's cooling as the reason. Caloris Planitia is an area of flames and light. However, moving slightly to the north, we will find a land of ice and darkness. The tilt of Mercury's proper motion axis is very small, which is why its polar regions are perpetually enveloped in dusk. The sun here either hangs by the very horizon or does not appear in the sky at all. Its rays haven't touched the bottoms of some of the craters for as long as millions of years. There is no wonder that Borealis Planitia, a plain surrounding the planet's north pole, is the coldest region here. The temperature in some of its areas is around 80 Kelvin, which is 193 degrees Celsius below zero. Some deposits of water ice have been detected here in the shade of the mountain ridges around craters. Measuring up to 2 meters in thickness, they are covered by a layer of rocky dust, preventing the ice from evaporation. At the same time, some elevations, which do catch sun rays, may get as hot as 380 Kelvin, or 107 degrees Celsius. Interestingly, such contrasting areas of the surface may lie almost next to each other, but the planet's rarefied atmosphere does not allow them to effectively exchange heat, and so the stark temperature contrast remains. Our tour is getting us to more southern latitudes. Practically on one parallel with Caloris Planitia, but three and a half thousand kilometers to the west, there is one of the largest craters on Mercury, Rachmaninoff. Its diameter measures up to 290 kilometers and it's roughly one billion years old. There is a tall peak ring in its center. It is formed by tall mountain peaks and measures roughly 130 kilometers in diameter. The rocks in this area are different from the rest of the landscape. They are of a reddish hue and signs of solidified streams can be distinguished on the surface. This structure is assumed to be of volcanic origin and is a mark of one of the last volcanic activity events on the planet. Also, the lowest point on Mercury's relief has been registered here, which is minus 5,380 meters relative to the average value for the planet. Beyond the central ring, there are comparatively smooth and dark expanses. Moving on to the south, we will see a gigantic escarpment stretching for 820 kilometers from southwest to northeast. 
It is called Enterprise Rupees, which in some places towers as high as several thousand meters. There are quite a few escarpments on Mercury, but Enterprise Rupees is the largest. These bizarre features of terrain are believed to have formed as the planet cooled. When Mercury's interior gave away some of its heat, the celestial body slightly shrank, losing roughly 1% in volume. This deformed the planet's lithosphere, which produced gigantic folds. Almost half of Enterprise Rupees is located on the territory of Mercury's largest crater named Rembrandt. Its diameter measures 716 kilometers, and the wide basin contains a great number of smaller features of relief. For example, there are small mountain ridges running from the crater's outer ring to its center. Their width lies within 1 and 10 kilometers, and their length may reach 180 kilometers. Another ridge forms a ring roughly 450 kilometers in diameter. There is also an elaborate pattern of deep cracks to be seen on the crater's bottom, which resembles a spider web. It is believed that more detailed studies of the rocks forming the crater's surface should help us better understand Mercury's inner makeup and the processes running in its interior. In spite of close attention paid to Mercury by astronomers, and in spite of the advancement of observation equipment, the planet is still mysterious and largely understudied. However, even Mercury cannot stay unexplored forever. Even at this moment, the Baby Colombo spacecraft is on its way, rapidly approaching this celestial body. It is a joint project of the ESA and Japan. The equipment on board the spacecraft will help collect data on the planet's surface and atmosphere composition, study the magnetosphere and solar wind, and update information on the relief features. Bepi Colombo has passed Mercury before, but there are still a few elaborate maneuvers to perform up ahead to break speed and enter operational orbit around the planet. It is estimated that this will have happened by 2025, after which the spacecraft will go on to collect and transmit data. Unfortunately, it is going to take a while before any probes land on Mercury's forbidding surface. The extreme conditions and challenges of accessibility make this planet exceptionally hard to explore. Nevertheless, with time, it is bound to yield its secrets to us. In spite of everything, exploration of the universe continues, and we are happy to be observing this process along with you. Feel free to acknowledge our efforts with likes and subscribe to our channel to learn more about space. And let's keep in touch.